This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 12, Modeling Using Similarity. Our essential question is, how can we use similar triangles to determine the height or distance of objects? In example one, not all flagpoles are perfectly upright, that is to say, perpendicular to the ground. Some are oblique, that is to say, neither parallel nor at a right angle, slanted. Imagine an oblique flagpole in front of an abandoned building. So this is our flagpole. Can we use sunlight and shadows to determine the length of the flagpole? So let's draw a sun up at the top of your paper and imagine that it is casting a shadow. And we know that a shadow is going to be a length along the ground. So let's imagine that this is our shadow of the flagpole. Can we use sunlight and shadows to determine the length of the flagpole? Well, the sunlight also creates sunbeams. So let's imagine that this is creating a sunbeam here. Assume that we know the following information. The length of the shadow of the flagpole is 15 feet. Okay, the length of the shadow is 15 feet. Let's go ahead and label that. The length of the shadow is 15 feet. There's a mark on the flagpole three feet from its base. It's called the base point O. And let's call that three foot mark point C. We'll call the top of the flagpole A and the end of the shadow B. Let's also consider the sunbeam from point C. The sunbeam would be parallel on the objects. So it's important to note that AB is parallel to C and let's go ahead and label the other end of that sum bean point D. So again, it's important to note that those lines are parallel. And the reason that's important is because we will use corresponding angles to prove similarity. So back to our question of, can we use sunlight and shadows to determine the length of the flagpole? If we can create and prove similar triangles, yes, we can. So here we have triangles. Now we just need to prove that they are similar. We've um, labeled some of our triangles. Let's finish labeling them. The length of this shadow is 15 feet. The mark on the flagpole is three feet from the base. And the shadow of this three foot portion is 1.7 feet. So the shadow of this portion of the flagpole is 1.7 feet. Okay, so first we just need to prove that these two triangles are similar. So our first triangle is right here. And our second triangle is right here. And they have in common angle O. So we know that angle O is congruent to angle O, which is in both triangles. But we need one more angle to prove congruence. Well, since these lines are parallel, that creates corresponding angles. So we could say that this angle is congruent to this angle. Or we could say that this angle is congruent to this angle. So we just need to name one of them. Let's go with the one down here. We'll call that ODC. Angle ODC is congruent to angle OBA. Angle OBA. And because of the angle angle criterion, we now know that these are similar triangles. Now that we know that they're similar, we can use 
their ratios of corresponding sides to find the missing length of the flagpole. Again, we know that the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So we'll use that to solve the problem. So we have the length of the flagpole and that section is OA. And then we have the three foot section and that is OC. So we would have our dilated over our original. Again, we'll consider the larger triangle, the dilated, and the smaller one, the original. That takes care of the, the lengths along the flagpole. Now let's consider the lengths along the shadow. The lengths along the shadow. So we have the flagpole shadow and that segment is OB. That's the dilated. Then we have the original and that would be 1.7 and that would be OD. That's just setting up our ratios of corresponding sides. So we have the flagpole shadow over the section shadow. It helps to color code those to help us to see that relationship. So let's take a look. We have the flagpole and the three foot section. So here's our flagpole and then here's our three foot section. So the flagpole, the long one, that's our dilated, that's OA and the three foot section is OC and that's our dilated over original. And then the other pair would be the shadow of the original and then the shadow of the, or rather the shadow of the dilated, that's OB and then OD is the section shadow. Then the next thing we want to do is substitute our numbers. So we've got the length of OA and the length of OA is unknown. Let's let X equal the length of the flagpole. Then we have the length of OC which is 3. The length of OB which is 15 feet and the length of OD which is 1.7. And recall from our study on proportions how to solve. This is an equivalent ratio so we just need to find the value of x that will make this a true equivalent ratio. And we can solve for x by writing the cross product. The cross product is 1.7 times x is equal to 3 times 15. So go ahead and solve that equation. Divide by 1.7 and the value of x rounded to the nearest tenth is 26.5. So the answer is 26.5 feet for the flagpole height. Number one, you want to determine the approximate height of one of the tallest buildings in the city. You are told that if you place a mirror some distance from yourself so that you can see the top of the building in the mirror, then you can indirectly measure the height using similar triangles. Let O be the location of the mirror so that the person shown can see the top of the building. You might want to lay a mirror on the floor and just 
imagine what this might look like. So we have point O, and that's where the mirror is. So this person is looking into the mirror and then sees the top of the building. Question A. Why is triangle ABO similar to triangle STO? Well, we have two pair of congruent angles proving similarity. We know that angle STO is a right angle, and we know that A BO is a right angle. So we have one angle that is uh, shown to be congruent on the corresponding parts of the triangle. Again, we have angle B, rather, let's do that. We have angle A BO is congruent to angle STO which is equal to 90 degrees. Then we also have the 36 degree angle that is equal. And that is angle BOA is congruent to angle TOS, which is equal to 36 degrees. So by the angle angle criterion, we know that these are similar triangles. Because they are similar triangles, we can use the equivalent ratios of the corresponding sides to find the length of the height of the building, or rather just to find the height of the building. Part B, label the diagram with the following information. The distance from eye level straight down to the ground is 5.3 feet. I'm going to label this on the next page. So if on the next page, uh, would you go down to part D? We'll go back to C. But for right now, go to part D and draw the diagram. So draw the stick figure and then draw the distance to O and then the distance to the building, and then the height of the building. Then it says the distance from eye level straight down is 5.3 feet. So this is 5.3. The distance from the person to the mirror is 7.2 feet. The distance from the person to the base of the building, the person to the base of the building is 1,750 feet. The height of the building will be represented by X. Next, question C. What is the distance from the mirror to the building? The distance from the mirror to the building, that would be right here. And that is not given to us, but we have enough information that we could figure it out. 7.2 plus a number equals 1750. To, so to find the missing length, we would simply subtract 1750 and take away 7.2, and that will give us the missing length. So we have 1,742.8 feet. Go ahead and label that as well. 1,742.8. Do you have enough information to determine the approximate height of the building? All right, so let's see. We know that they're similar, so we know the ratios are equivalent, and we know, uh, let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have four parts, and three of them are known. So yes, we have enough information. We know that the ratios of the corresponding sides are equivalent, right here the ratios of the corresponding sides. So what I was checking to see is, do we have 
the corresponding sides and a number for three of the four of them. So let's go ahead and solve our problem. When you're writing your ratios, remember to write the dilated over the original. And then you might be thinking, well, how do I know which ones are the dilated and which ones are the original? It doesn't matter. Just pick one and stick with it. In this case, I'm going to stick with the person and the shadow. So over here, this one is going to be my original. And then the building and its shadow is going to be my dilated figure. So let's go ahead and highlight our corresponding numbers. We want the dilated for the person and the building. The dilated amount is x. The original amount is 5.3. So in this case, the vertical segments are the corresponding. And then we have, for the right side of the equation, the horizontal segments. And the horizontal segments are 7.2 and 1742.8. And it's important that you put them in the right position so that you get the right answer. So the top one is the dilated amount, and the dilated amount is... 1742.8 and then the original is 7.2. Pause the video, write your cross product and solve for x. So I've written my equation solved for the variable x and the height of the building rounded to the nearest tenth is 1,282 feet uh, 82.9 feet. That is the height of the building. Next, a geologist wants to determine the distance across the widest part of a nearby lake. The geologist marked off specific points around the lake so that the line DE would be parallel to the line BC. The segment BC is selected specifically because it is the widest part of the lake. The segment DE is selected specifically because it was a short enough distance to easily measure. The geologist sketched the situation below. Question A. Has the geologist done enough work so far to use similar triangles to help measure the widest part of the lake? Parts are point D and E. So we have point D and point E. They have been dilated from point A, so we know that B and C, these segments connecting, are parallel to each other. And that's important because it gives us corresponding angles. Since DE is parallel to BC, we have corresponding angles. that show a pair of congruent angles. So we have this angle and this angle being congruent. And then angle A is part of both triangles. Angle A is congruent to angle A. So we have, by the angle-angle criterion, we have similar triangles. Angle A is congruent to angle A, which is part of both triangles. And then we also have angle ADE congruent to angle ABC. Since we have two pair of corresponding congruent angles, we know that the triangles are similar. 
Since the triangles are similar, we can use this method. The geologist has made the following measurements. Segment DE is 5 feet, AE is 7 feet, and EC is 15 feet. Does she have enough information to complete the task? If so, determine the length across the widest part of the lake. If not, state which additional information is needed. So let's go ahead and label our amounts. We have 5 feet here, 7 feet here, and then we know this in this section here is 15 feet. We're looking for the widest section, let's call that X, and uh, what we need to know is do we have enough information. So let's look at what are the corresponding sides and make sure that we have a number for three of the four parts. So taking a look at the segments that we know, we know 5 and we're looking for X and we know 7 and we would need this one. That is not given to us, but we can figure it out just by um, a simple arithmetic problem. So let's go ahead and do that. If the smaller length here is 7 and the longer length is 15 altogether, now let's go back and label this correctly. This 15 feet is the segment for EC. Let's make sure that we have that correct. This segment is 15 feet and AE is 7 feet. So again, the information that we need is the smaller segment and the longer segment. And we know the smaller segment is 7, but we need to use arithmetic to find the longer segment, which is 7 and 15. So the longer segment has a length of 22. All right, now we have enough information and we're ready to solve that problem. So I'm going to solve it up here so we can look at the problem as we solve it. Remember to use dilated over original. We're going to set up a proportion and it's a good idea to label your triangles which one you're using for dilated and which one you're using for the original. So I'm actually going to draw them separately and label. I'm going to use my small one for the original and I'm going to use the larger one for the dilated. I know that the length here is 7, and this is 5, and 22, and x. Then I'm going to highlight the corresponding parts. The corresponding parts are 5 and x, and then the other corresponding parts are 7 and 22. So I'm going to have one fraction for the, let's call that the horizontal length, and then another fraction for the vertical lengths. So first I'm going to do the horizontal section. And so I have the dilated amount of x Wait, we're doing the horizontal first. The dilated amount of 22 and the original amount of 7. And then for the vertical amounts, my dilated amount is x and my original amount is 5. Setting up your proportion can sometimes be the trickiest part, and color coding it can help you set that up. All right, so now we know the cross product can be used to solve this problem. Pause the video and solve the problem. I've set up my equation and solved for the variable 
and the widest part of the lake is approximately 15.7 feet. Question C. Assume that geologist could only measure a maximum of 12 feet. Could she still find the distance across the widest part of the lake and what would need to be done differently? Let's look at the diagram one more time. And I'm just going to erase this so we can look at it clearly. So we know that this measurement right here was 15 feet. And if she only has a way to measure 12 feet, then these segments are too far apart. BC is the widest part of the lake, and that's what she wants to know. So that segment needs to stay where it is. What she would need to do is she would need to move DE closer to BC so that this measurement was a maximum of 12. So if she moved this point D here and moved E over here so that this distance was a maximum of 12, then she could still use this method. She can still find the distance. DE would have to be moved closer to BC by at least three feet. And this should say she, not he. <laughs> Make sure that you fix that. Then let's skip ahead to the summary. In this lesson, we learned that we can use similar triangles to determine the height or distance of objects in everyday life that we cannot directly measure. To use this method, make sure you have enough information. The angle-angle criterion can prove similarity. If figures are similar, then use equivalent ratios of corresponding sides. You need three of the four lengths.